I'm Josh with Woodland Mills, and Neil and I are really proud to announce the release of our new WC88 wood chipper. Uh, this wood chipper is a culmination of five years of R&D, uh, lots of revisions, lots of uh, design. We've designed the entire thing from the ground up with features we searched all across the world for. Uh, these features are things I'm going to go over. They're going to add uh, value to you. There's gonna, the usability is going to be there. We basically looked for the best parts of every chipper we could find, and we brought them together to make this chipper. Um, as you can see, right through the CAD stage, we've taken this and actually had 3D models printed of a lot of the parts. This is an entire 3D uh, printed model of the entire chipper. Uh, an earlier revision where the, the handle went around the top. Um, but yeah, this chipper, we've taken the time to go through it piece by piece, designed every part from the ground up. And I think you'll, you'll see the benefits and the features and how they're going to make chipping better for you uh, as I go through them. But yeah, we're very proud to release this and we're excited to show you all the features here. Basically, this chipper is going to come to you in a crate. It's shipped on a you know, 4048 steel crate. It's just over a thousand pounds, a little closer to 1100 when it's crated, and it can be delivered by a freight truck. Tailgated down to the ground, pump cart onto the, onto the, the ground. And then from that point, you're going to be able to work with your tractor to get it out of the crate. Basically, let me set this aside. The crate it's an iron crate and the top of the crate is removable. So there's four bolts around the bottom of the crate. You're going to undo these bolts. The top of the crate's going to lift off. With the top of the crate off, it's going to give you access. To the three point hitch. With the three point hitch, we, we provide the pins. You're going to be able to back your tractor right up to the crate. Use the pins provided, lift it right up out of the crate, remove the crate from underneath it, and set it right back on the ground. Once you've got it on the ground, you're going to be able to assess how important it is to adjust the chipper, to set it up for your tractor. You're going to want your PTO shaft, which connects here, and it's provided in the crate as well. You're going to want it on a slight downward angle, 10 to 15 degrees. So you want to set our PTO shaft connection point so it's a few inches lower than that of your tractor. In the lowest setting, this is 21 and a half inches off the ground. With the use of these bolts here and these extra holes, you're going to be able to lift the chipper with your tractor, undo these bolts. The base will lower up to six inches. You can put the bolts back through the holes, tighten them back up, and then set the chipper back down. So you can do all the adjustments just using your three-point hitch. And that allow you to set this up for tractors anywhere between 30 horsepower and 100 horsepower. This three-point hitch is also quick attach ready. So we've got it all ready for the quick attach to click in on all, all three points and allow you to click into it with your universal quick attach. And then all you have to do is connect your PTO shaft, make sure you're at the right angle. The PTO shaft itself is shear pin protected. So if you're running it on a higher horsepower tractor, you know that this shear pin's got you, uh, got you protected. If you overload the chipper, you're going to take out the PTO or the shear pin first. The PTO shaft is also trimmable for length, so you're going to want to make sure that in the lowest position, when the chipper's on the ground, you have enough overlap in the shaft. Uh, that's all covered in our manual, which I'll get to. But and in the highest position, it doesn't bottom out. Trimming the PTO shaft. Won't have to be done by everybody, but you, some clients will have to do it depending on the tractor, the year, the age, the makeup, the length of the arms, etc. And again, that's all covered in the manual, which is going to be found here. 
The other thing you're going to find in here is all your hardware. The chipper is 90% assembled. So basically, when you lift it out of the crate, you're going to be assembled from this point all the way through to this point and from here down. In the manual, we're going to cover what else you have to do to get this thing ready to start chipping. So our manual is a full color, covers everything from getting it out of the crate like we just discussed, setting it up, doing the initial uh, basically counting of the parts, counting of the bolts, uh, assembly of the chute onto the chipper, which is just four bolts, uh, the discharge chute, as well as the assembly of the infeed chute, which comes as four panels. So this infeed chute is going to come shipped one, two, three, and four panels, as well as these two bars loose, and that gets assembled and then bolted onto the hinge. But again, all that's covered in your manual, as well as the trimming of the PTO shaft, the raising and lowering of the base, initial setup, and uh, everything else you need to know, as well as exploded views, if you have any questions. So once you've got this on the tractor, the chute is going to come wrapped up in the crate as well. So it's going to be loose. You're going to install the chute with the four bolts and as per the manual. This allows you to rotate the chute. So you can set it wherever you want to discharge your chips. The infeed chute is the four panels. It all bolts together. These are all nylon lock nuts. Washers on the outside only to keep it smooth on the inside. These are all carriage head. Um, this outer rim here is basically designed to get rid of the sharp edge of the metal of the chute. And what this allows is as your limbs are coming, the sharp edge of the metal can bind into the limbs. And, and the weight of the log and the limb will give you hang-ups. With this bar here and the radius, it forces stuff to not be able to get caught up and it hops up over. This is our safety bar. It also controls your in-feed uh, mechanism. So when it's pushed in, it's in reverse. Out is forward, neutral, reverse. So when you're chipping, it's all the way out. As a safety, you can hit it with your leg, kick it into neutral. You can also kick it into reverse and keep your hands free on, or your hands on the material itself. So out is forward, neutral, reverse. This whole infeed chute from here back flips up for storage flips up for transport because when you're going through narrow trails in the woods um, you, this is set on an angle to the chipper so it makes it quite a bit wider than it needs to be for transport as well so with the use of a few draw latches at the bottom I know even for storage in my own spot that this takes up a lot of room with the chute down. So I like to fold it up for storage as well. So the hydraulic control pin comes out. Put the pin in, undo the two latches, and then this hole, you can grab here, up, there's a handle here, and then you're in the storage position. It rests here on top of our, our um, infeed carriage, and we've put a rubber plate in here so it can rest without damaging the finish. You'll see with this flipped up, I can show you better some of the details. This is the, the pin where you can attach the controls. The, um, 
the arm is all done with uh, rotating ball joints so it's nice and smooth. Uh, these are your cam locks and this is our grab handle. So down inside of here we've got our clear sheets and what these do is if anything kicks back this stops all the small stuff so it never makes it back out to shoot at you. It's also a reminder that you should never put your hand inside of here or get anything closer. Inside of here we've got our infeed roller itself. Now this roller, not sure how well you can see it, I'll use a flashlight here just to this is an eight and a quarter inch diameter infeed roller um, with hardened steel chisel knives on it. This infeed roller is large enough to hop up over any material you're going to try and feed into this. These chisels dig in as you present the material to it and it climbs up over the material. So you've got the single top roller eight and a quarter inch. Below it, and you can just see the ends of them here, we've installed two rollers to take all the downward force of the infeed roller itself. So when you're pushing down with just a single roller onto a metal plate, you're gonna have a lot of friction on the metal plate. The harder we push with our springs, the more it bites into the, the material you're trying to chip, but at the same time, without rollers, it's gonna apply friction as well. So it becomes a little bit of a, a dance without rollers because you're applying weight, but you're adding friction. So we've added these rollers to the bottom to eliminate all that friction. It keeps the material, they're set at just, just over the lower chute, keeps the material from dragging, keeps the friction off, and it allows the material to feed seamlessly. So these two rollers have all sealed bearings pushed inside of them. They just pop out the bottom here, two bolts. The infeed roller itself is driven hydraulically and that's why we have that safety bar. It basically controls a hydraulic control down here. That was reverse, pushed in, out, and neutrals in the middle. The hydraulics are fed from a reservoir tank. This reservoir tank is, is 20 liters basically, so a single pail of hydraulic fluid, ISO 32, which is a common uh, hydraulic fluid. The filler cap is here, put in the 20 liters. We've got our pickup line. We've got our hydraulic motor or pump, uh, sorry, the pump, and this is gonna pump uh, directly through from the PTO shaft. So there is no belts, there is nothing to slip in between the PTO shaft. This pump runs at 540. It's connected with a love joint connection which is maintenance free. It also takes out any vibration and allows the, the pump here to work seamlessly. The pump feeds the pressure into our hydraulic control which you've seen how that actuates. And then we go to this side to see where all that hydraulic fluid's gonna go. So out of the control, we're gonna feed into the motor. Out of the motor, now these are all protective sheaths on the hydraulic lines. They're all banded at the ends. It's gonna keep the sun off of there and any branches and sticks from getting into our uh, hydraulic lines. Um, the the return out of the motor feeds through this device here, and this is a variable flow hydraulic device. So what this allows us to do is feed uh, at varying rates through the chipper. So if you have a large horsepower tractor and you're chipping small things, you'll never need this control. This control is for balancing your tractor's horsepower with the material you're trying to chip. This is an eight inch chipper. The, in, the opening is eight, eight by eight. Uh, the infeed roller will, will grab eight inch material and push it. But you do need a lot of horsepower to chip eight inches of solid wood. This allows people with lower horsepower to chip larger things. So when we say you can run 30 horsepower to 100 horsepower, 30 horsepower won't chip 
eight inch material at full, full speed. If we set full speed so it would, you'd be very frustrated when you were chipping smaller things because it would take too long. So we've set this for an average um, so that you can get the work done. You can, the chipper will definitely make you work to keep up with it and it'll feed the material quickly. If you need to do larger stuff, you can dial down the speed of the infeed to balance it with your tractor. And you'll see in the videos where we do this and how the chipper reacts and how it slows itself down and takes the stress off the tractor. So from here it feeds out. We've got a return line that feeds back down to the reservoir on the bottom. The whole hydraulics are um, basically ready to go. You just fill the tank, you spool it. When your tractor kicks in, it starts running. You know, you hit it forward reverse, it'll purge itself and you're ready to go. Uh, hydraulic motor is all sized for our infeed roller. Uh, there's no, no maintenance, nothing you need to do here. I rotate it this way now. You can see this base, and I talked about adjusting the base earlier. This is all laser cut plate, a half inch thick. Some would say it's overbuilt, but I mean, we didn't want this base doing anything but what it's supposed to do. Um, in the side here, it's thickened up, as well as in the three point connections. So Let's, let's go now to basically how you're going to connect. You've got your three-point hitch uh, arms on here, your quick attach. You've got your PTO shaft on here. What's behind this guard is what actually transfers the power to the chipper itself. So I'm just going to close this. I'm going to pull the pin on this. So what we've done is a, a flip-down guard. So with these pins out, And this is also for safety, so you can't run the chipper with the guards not in place. So in behind this rotating guard, we're going to find everything we use to transfer the power from the tractor through the PTO shaft, through our pulley, uh, up into the flywheel. So I'll start with the drive shaft uh, where the PTO clicks in. This is an inch and a half uh, steel machine down to fit the PTO. It passes through our pull, cast iron pulley here into a flange bearing, which passes through to the PTO pump itself. So, uh, and that's where that Lovejoy connection is. So this is a straight shaft all the way through the PTO uh, hydraulic pump for the uh, infeed is on the back of that PTO shaft on the front. This goes through our BX series belt. So we've got four belts here. BX series, they're cogged V belts, uh, high quality, they're designed to transfer the power efficiently and with very little maintenance. Uh, these belts transition over to our main shaft. This is a two inch shaft, cast iron pulley again, flange bearing at the back, grease nipple at the top. So a two inch main or upper shaft that holds the flywheel, inch and a half lower shaft that takes the PTO shaft. Our tensioning system on the belts and keeping the tension on the belts is very important. You don't want uneven tension because then you could slip, uh, you'll slip your belts because you don't have all force of all four. So you want even tension and that's why we've got our springs on both sides of our tensioning system. This system keeps a steady pressure on the belts themselves on the return side. So this is our drive, uh, our pull side and this is our return side. And what that does is make sure that we're making the most contact possible with all of our pulleys, with all of our belts, and we're transferring the power efficiently. If belts are kept tensioned properly and they aren't slipping, they're gonna last a lot longer and they're gonna wear a lot slower. So this is a very important part of keeping the chipper in good order. Good working condition is to keep the tension proper. And with this system, you literally just have to preload these springs. And they come uh, preloaded, but you want to keep them balanced. The other thing this system allows us to do is change the belts really easily when it comes time. So this system, you undo the bolts at the or the nuts at the back here. You loosen them off. These springs come out of these connectors. This will just flip out of the way. 
So with this system flipped out of the way, the belts just lift off the face. You can load your new belts on the same way. This arm flips back, you click the springs in and you pre-tension these back up. So if you make a note of where they were, um, you can just put them right back in the same spot. This whole guard assembly I just flipped down is made out of quarter inch plate. It's got the three point hitch connection that comes through it. So the top link comes right through it and that's all passed through here with three eighths plate and you'll see the pin here uh, that I had to take out to get this open. Now speed wise, uh, this shaft down here runs at 540. Your tractor spooled up, you set 540. The reason you want to run this at 540 RPMs, there's a, there's a few reasons, but the whole chipper is designed to have a 540 input here. One reason is the airflow. So when you're trying to chip, you're trying to exhaust chips and you're trying to make chips. So you can make chips at a lower speed, but you may not be able to exhaust them out of the chipper itself. And that'll add to the workload because the chips are tumbling around in there. So it's important to run the tractor at 540 to make sure that we get the airflow so that we can get the chips out of the chipper. So even if you have more horsepower than you need, you still need to run your PTO shaft at 540 to make it an efficient use of the chipper itself because it's not just about the power to make the chip, it's about the required airflow to exhaust the chip. So 540 into here, we use our cast iron pulleys, we, we spin it up. So we get it up over 1100 RPMs at the top shaft. So 540 in, over 1100 up here. This gives us all the uh, airflow we need to exhaust those chips. It also gives us a lot of inertia and momentum. So when we have that flywheel spinning at 1100, we have a lot more energy inside the chipper ready to smooth out any peak workload. So when you put in something larger, if you're running a four inch branch, but it, it Ys out to a six inch connection, well, we can make that and you won't even notice it because of the inertia, the momentum in the flywheel, in the chipper itself with all the rotating parts. So the more weight we have rotating and the higher RPM we rotate it at, the more energy we have built into the chipper and that's gonna soften the load on the tractor as it's doing its job. So I think we've covered everything in underneath the guard here. We'll close this up. So now we've gone over the drive system uh, from the PTO side. So now I'm gonna get this chute just flipped down. So you can see how easy it is to flip it down so I can open this clamshell up here and show you the inside of this machine. Again, handle here, handle at the top. You can lock these in. Now I've left this loose so I can get in without a wrench, but this can be tightened with a, a wrench. And then I can set this chute to hold it where I want it once it's open. So this is a 360 swivel all the way around. You can set this if you're trying to get rid of them. If you're trying to fill a wheelbarrow or a trailer, you can use this, but for Holding the chute, I like it out here. And all the way up. And this will just sit on the ground like that. And it acts as a prop. So when we're servicing, we don't have to worry about this clamshell. So we did this design basically, um, after looking at all of them, it makes the most sense to give you the most access to the knives for changing, for the chipper itself to keep it clean and cleaned out, and for service, this basically gives us the most access or all the access we could ever need. So this whole flywheel with the two inch shaft is dropped down from the top and, and the flange bearings are bolted in. You're gonna see our flywheel here is solid one inch thick metal at 24 inches in diameter with four reversible pocketed knives. So each of these knives covers half of our eight inch stroke. These are just over four inches long. 
So each pass of every knife is only ever four inches. And this helps with the lower horsepower tractors. It helps smooth the load out. So if you have eight inch material, you're basically cutting four inches. 90 degrees later, you're cutting the other four inches. So it smooths out the load on your tractor. And this will help uh, carry, you know, when you're going through limbs or branches that are bigger, you'll notice way less impact on your tractor because we've taken the load off the single blade. So four blades, they're all pocketed and reversible. These are hardened steel, very good quality. We have, um, because you can flip them and because you can swap them, so they're all the same blade. If you had a foreign object come through your chipper, you're less likely to damage all your blades. You're more likely to damage one blade, um, be it a nail or a, a piece of wood in your, or a piece of steel in your wood. So it helps with that. You rotate the single blade and now you're back to all new. Uh, in the field, if you got your wrench and your Allen key, you can swap these or rotate them, you know, after your, your day's work or if you're noticing they're getting dull. So it's all done in the field. Clamshell opens. You're in here. You have access to everything. On the back of this flywheel, so it's 120 pounds solid steel. Some manufacturers quote their total revolving weight, which is flywheel plus shafts plus pulleys plus you know, primary drive pulleys. Uh, we're quoting the actual weight of the solid steel flywheel. So a 24 inch diameter plate of, of iron at one inch thick weighs 120 pounds uh, with the, the tabs on the back, which basically make up for the machining pockets um, for the blades themselves. So your flywheel rotates on the two inch shaft with the flange bearings. Uh, everything is, is really overbuilt at this point, but that's how you want your chipper built. You're feeding a lot of material with a lot of force against this flywheel and it needs to be uh, overbuilt at least. So when we look at the clamshell now, we can close it. This is our air inlet. And we, we did a lot of work on balancing our air to make sure we had enough coming in, but kept the noise inside. So, you know, uh, some of our theories were, let's let as much air in as possible. Well, it doesn't help flow and we have flow meters and we tested the outputs and basically determined that in here we made the least amount of noise we got we maximized our air and uh, it, it does everything we need it to do with our air intake tucked right in here so if i was going to use the chipper i'd want to tighten this and torque it as per the manual um, but for demonstration I'm going to rotate it now onto another feature which we have built in on this machine and that's a chainsaw holder. So this feature here is removable if you don't want to use it. It's coming standard at this point but basically you can loosen this off and put your chainsaw bar right down through these two rubber pads and bring your chainsaw into the bush so you don't have to have a separate box. This goes right on slides in, it's a universal mount, it fits most chainsaws. Um, most chainsaws you'd use for doing branches and chipping. And uh, the uh, stops basically rest on this pad. Chainsaw, tighten this up, it locks it in place for getting it in and out of the bush. I wanna talk a little bit more about the design itself. Um, you know, we've got our bed plate here, so I'm gonna rotate this a little bit. So this is our bed plate or counter knife. So the flywheel has the four blades on it and they're all rotating. That blade, like a pair of scissors, needs a second blade to make the cut on. That second blade is called an anvil, a bed plate, a counter knife. There's different, different terminology for it, but they all do the same thing. It's basically the second edge for that blade to cross against. This is all adjustable and slotted in here. So in the manual, it's going to cover the, the depth you want or the gap you want between your bed plate and your knives. And with this clamshell design, you can just look straight down there from the top. You can use a flashlight, you shine it in, you can see the gap. You can set the bed plate, rotate it, make sure the next blade, rotate it, make sure the next blade. So you can go through the whole process quite easily because you can see down from the top. The whole chipper was derived around the, the original concept was the double plate design. And through these double plates, we had all the um, 
cutouts laser cut and placed so that all the pieces pass through the laser plate. So everything's self-aligning in our manufacturing process. Um, the bed plate, the in-feed holes, all the bearing plates are all laser cut on one machine. So it takes out all the errors and it also stiffens the machine up. So this, this thick metal plate here for the three point passes right through both sets of plates and takes this lower bolt here. Um, on the other side, well, even in the legs you've seen, we've done all pass-through design with the welds on the inside. Uh, the arm for the tensioner on the belt passes through to locate. Our pump and our uh, Lovejoy connection are all put through a central hole. Uh, again, laser cut. The, um, on this side, it's, it's not much easier to see, but again, the arms pass through. Our connections here are all welded, seamless welded all the way around. So if we were to look up inside of here, it's hollow in the back. So I can get up in here and do these bolts because the inner follows the diameter of the flywheel. It's all these details that we've gone through to make sure that not only does it chip well, but it's easy to maintain, it's easy to set up, it's easy for you to get it set for your tractor, or if you're gonna loan it to your neighbor, he could reset it up for his tractor. Uh, we've taken everything we've ever been frustrated in a chipper with, and we've got rid of it. We've put uh, you know, our heart and soul into this, and really, I don't think you'll find a better chipper on the market, um, hands down, at this price point. Our name is here, our serial number and our rating plate is all found on the inside. And yeah, that's the new WC88 by Woodland Mills.